Lord Winston, welcome to Wolverhampton. Thank you. A happy birthday as well. Thank you. Um, you've had an amazing career. Um, surgeon, writer, politician, and now radio presenter. What's your role here today? Well, I don't see myself as a politician. Um, what's my role here today? I'm just um, teaching, I suppose, really, a lecture, a, a, sort of a, a public lecturer, to div divulge a few thoughts about what I think is important in science. You obviously think that research plays a really important part in our world. Um, why is that? Well, humans are the most inquisitive animals. And if we, we are all researching, I mean, a baby when it's born is researching. Babies are exploring the world. Um, and if we weren't exploring, we, we wouldn't learn. Um, so researching at its basic level is learning more about what makes us what we are. In the past, you've also um, not been backward in putting your ideas forward for change in the NHS. Um, do you think the problems can be solved? Well, it's a very complicated question to ask in a one-liner. Um, I think that um, we are facing a very serious uh, deficiency at the moment in the latest Health Act, which I think is going to prove to be disastrous. And I think we won't see the full serious effect of that health, that health Act for about two years. But I think ultimately the extreme fragmentation, the... Um, increasing cost that that form of administration will require, the vested conflicts of interest that GPs will have in offering and commissioning services whilst at the same time having their patients being commissioned for, and a whole host of other um, issues are amongst the most serious examples of thoroughly bad legislation. Um, and I personally feel very angry because I think that uh, the country's been hoodwinked. Um, so some of the ills that face the uh, NHS are made by politicians who feel um, arrogantly that they knew best without actually really looking at what they could have done or doing proper pilot studies. Now, one of your other roles is chairman of the Genesis Research Trust. Um, can you tell us a bit about the organisation? The Genesis Research Trust is a, um, is a trust designed to do research for women and children's diseases really all aspects of of human reproduction. So um, we look at um, diseases which affect premature uh, birth, the commonest cause of babies dying in the UK. Um, we look at brain damage in infants. We look at cancer of the uterus and the ovary. We look at uh, genetic defects in embryos. We look at miscarriage. We look at infertility. We have a, look at a whole range of a raft of disorders. And the uh, Genesis Research Trust um, has these amazing followers who are prepared to cycle in odd parts of the world on one of our cycle trips to raise money for us. Um, I think it's a ph phenomenally important cause because the beginnings of life are really what mould us to what we become and mould how we experience disease later on. Um, and that's based, uh, the Genesis research only does what is regarded as internationally recognized standard research. So it's all peer reviewed by top quality science peer reviewers. Uh, and we only fund stuff which we regard as being exemplary. And we have an impact in the third world. Um, but the unit, of course, um, has, been, has produced a number of important innovations. The first cancer smear tests were done um, in that unit. The first ultrasound machine was made in that unit. Uh, first genetic screening of embryos was done in that, um, in that unit. So the continuous number of uh, improvements, I think, which are going on and still going on. So there's a massive range of activities. Well, the, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good setup, really. Mm. I'm a, an MA student in broadcast journalism. Um, and is you've that, is M, Does the M stand for mistress or master? <laughs> master. <laughs> um, well, I don't know these days. Um, you've been involved in some brilliant TV programmes. Um, you've also written books and numerous articles. Um, with everything else that you're involved in, how do you find the creative time to do that? Um, well, I, 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 I do lots of things that you wouldn't know about. I make, I make steam engines, which go around the garden. Goodness uh, me! Um, usually at about three o'clock in the morning. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know, how do I find time? I'm actually a very lazy individual, and people seem to think I'm terribly hardworking and frightfully 
um, altruistic and you know I mean people build this kind of ludicrous character that they think you know some somebody on a pedestal I mean it's very difficult to explain to people I'm quite ordinary um, I don't see myself as brilliant or um, I just think that actually you know um, if you do what you're interested in doing you're gone doing it um, and perhaps my problem is that I am involved in too many things and therefore don't do any of them properly um, you obviously do them at whatever time of day you possibly can. Yeah. You recently produced an interesting series on Radio 4. Um, it was just finished, and it was about science and music. How did this come about? Well, it's typical of the BBC, which is a... I, I'm going to say this on record, um, and of course I shall get pilloried for this, but it seems, to my mind, sometimes to work in a very dysfunctional fashion. Last year I pitched for a four-part series to BBC Radio 4, for a four-part series on science and music. And I eventually got the commission and was given less than four week, weeks to rehearse, to, uh, to uh, research it and make the programme. All I had was just a producer, Martin Williams and myself, we did the whole thing together. And when the last programme, when the, when the second programme was going out, we still hadn't finished the series, I actually recorded the last programme inside the Arctic Circle on a boat and wrote the commentary and then sent it back by satellite telephone, having recorded it on a microphone with a little chip in it by, um, uh, to, to my producer in Wales. Um, it's not a very good way of making a series, uh, a serious uh, television, um, radio series. Um, so um, I feel amazed that we got it off at all. What is pleasing is that most people quite enjoyed it anyway, so it wasn't so hopeless. But I think the science of music is actually quite a difficult area. So we looked at a whole range of things from the physics of music uh, to the evolution of music um, to some aspects of uh, acoustics and performance uh, and a lot about brain function. So it covered a lot of different areas. I was very lucky too that the people I interviewed were prepared to be interviewed at short notice, which was helpful, because if they just turned me down and said, well, I'm too busy, I couldn't have made the series. Um, I know that these are still available to listen to on the BBC website. I think they are. Mm. On iPlayer. Um, Lord Winston, it's been brilliant talking to you. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.